everybody, it's Janet with Sugar Shine Designs and welcome to the first video Cottage Cuts blog hop. I'm so excited that you've joined me here today. This rustic card features a new die called Sparrow on Post from Cottage Cuts for the holiday season. And I'm going to show you how I combine that with some fun elements like these shaker pieces and the Merry Christmas die that's also from Cottage Cuts. I've been looking for an excuse to use burlap and this just seemed like the perfect combination. And what I chose to use was this burlap paper stack which I've had for a while but couldn't figure out what to do with it to be honest with you. It's backed with paper. Um, it really needs a strong backing because burlap is very stretchy and wouldn't cut very well without it being backed. Now I'm laying down the nested wacky stitched rectangle on this burlap and I'm securing it with tape so it doesn't move around and then inside I used one of the stitched oval set. That's the fourth die in. Now I want to talk about my stack here with the Gemini that I'm using today. I first have the purple plate at the bottom, the frosted plate, and then on top of that is the magnetic sheet there you see in the black. And then I've put down my piece of burlap with the dies taped on it. And the most important thing to add to this is this metal shim here. And then on top of that is the final plate. Now going back to the shim for a second, that metal shim is really going to help cut through something really thick like this burlap because uh, by putting the die like this, you're basically running die against the metal shim and that creates more pressure and a better cut. Now I ran this through a couple times so you may need to do that with your machine as well just to make sure that it cut well. And when I took the dies off of the burlap I needed to kind of pop the piece out there in the center but other than that it came out very cleanly. There was no rough edges or anything and it also took the indentation of the wacky stitch die. So I found that was good to know too. What I'm doing next here is laying out the die and making sure that the middle section is seated so that it fits exactly with where I cut the hole in the burlap. Now on top of that I'm going to place a piece of white fun foam and cut that using the same sandwich I used before. And what that does then is create a cut that almost identically matches my burlap cut. And what that creates then is a lift for the piece but also creates that shaker well that I need to put my shaker pieces in. Now you can see the end result here. The two pieces, the foam and the burlap fit nicely together and will work great for my shaker well. Now here's the stamp set I'm using. It's a stamp and coordinating die. I'm not using the die with this project today but I am stamping it using my, my uh, Misty here. And the reason I'm going to use the Misty is first I stamp it in black, then I stamp it in the Versa mark. And then I'm going to use clear embossing powder over the top of that and heat set it. And this is a great way to prep a piece like this if you're going to just try to color the outside edges of the image like I'm doing in this example. Now the reason that works so well as a technique is because the embossing powder really protects the image from any ink getting past the border of the image itself. So it's like a barrier and it's a lot easier and quicker to work with this way because you don't have to be quite as careful as you would if it were just stamped with ink. Now the color I'm using here is TB1 and this is a Spectrum Nor marker. Uh, the two colors I'm using is that TB1 and then if a moment later here, here you will see me use the green shade which is BT1. And these two shades are very similar in their color and uh, not their color but their tone so they blend very nicely together even though they're very different colors. Now as you're doing this you'll occasionally want to take your burlap piece and put on top of the image again to make sure that you've colored all of the white space that's going to show inside of that oval. Um, now some people would leave some of that white space and kind of just do a, a abstract border that would blend into the white. You could do that too. That would be very nice as well. I just chose not to try to do that in this case and you could see there that I was checking it just like I said and I knew that at that point I had colored enough around the image to fill up that whole white space inside the oval. 
Now I know my blending looks a little rough there, but as it dried, it really blended in nicely and I got kind of a nice watercolor effect. The red that I'm using here just to give it a pop of color in the berries is DR5. And um, you know, I think another thing to try here would be to use like uh, glitter glue or something like that for a 3D effect. That would have been a nice thing to try. Uh, here I'm taking that white fun foam and I'm using BG4 to edge the white space and the frame just so that in case if it, any of it would show through the oval piece or the burlap piece I'm putting on the top it wouldn't stick out. Brown fun foam would work very well in this case I just didn't have it. Now I'm using that two-sided tape that you see here just to kind of twist it and pull it around the oval. That's what's going to keep my acetate in place and allow my shaker window to be tight. So you'll see I apply that not only around the window but also on the edges. And uh, you'll notice here that my fun, fun foam piece is getting rather puckered, um, but it doesn't matter because that burlap piece is going to go on the top and cover up any of that puckering that you see. And if it does make the piece slightly smaller, it's not a problem because that just means then less of the fun foam will show through. Now here's part of the comedy of this project. I could not get this backing tape separated from the protective backing and I struggled with that, but I finally got it off. <laughs> um, now I have the acetate placed on top of that. And now it's time to put the burlap on top of the acetate piece, creating that sandwich of fun foam, acetate, and then finally the burlap. And that means I'm going to have a, a small well in the back that's big enough for my shaker pieces. Now I want to point out this fix. You see that glue that's showing through? If, if you can push it toward the frame, um, you can get it off with your fingers and not smear it all over your acetate window. That's very important for not having to redo your project. So now it's time for the magic. I'm going to put in some of this filler, which I got from Dollar Tree, and it's really an ornament filler, uh, but I thought it would be great for shaker. And this is an ivy plus the red berries. It's fairly flat, so I don't need a lot of room in my shaker well, but if you had something thicker, I would just recommend you cut two pieces of that fun foam and sandwich it together and then it should be big enough for anything you'd want to put in there just about. The fun foam really handles glue well so I just use glue here and then I can place the colored uh, stamped image on the back of this with the image of course showing through the window and once that has dried you can shake this thing the way you'd like like I'll show you here in a second and everything will stay in pretty good shape um, then that, you know, basically finishes this panel other than to put on the Merry Christmas words. And so rather than bore you to death by watching me do all of that, I'm just going to show you that I apply the Christmas word here. And you'll see I'm using again this very fine needle pointed glue dispenser. I just have Scotch Quick Dry in this. I got the dispenser from from Amazon and I use it a lot uh, for this sort of work because you can get just teeny tiny little drops of glue. Anything that I've globbed up I just touch up with my fingers so that it doesn't glob out when I place it on my on my uh, project but that tiny little needle dispenser is really what you need to keep everything neat. So now this has a dot for the eye in Christmas, but because I love bling, I had to use a gem for that. And so you'll see I use this deep red gem right there. Uh, they don't call me Sugar Shine for nothing. <laughs> I really like the shiny stuff. All right, so here's my card base. It's a four and a quarter by five and a half, from which I've placed some. Uh, decorator paper on there and now I can put my panel like so. So I have already pre-placed some uh, two-sided sticky tape here and I'm removing the backing paper and now I can apply it onto the card where I want it. Now at this point you could call this card done but I just couldn't help myself. I really like these holly leaves and the berries, so I decided to put some on the front of the card and inside of the card. 
And with that, I'll finally call this project done. Thank you so, so very much for joining me today. I'm so happy to have you here and I hope you'll come back and visit me again. Make sure that you qualify for the prize that I'm giving away, which is 24 spectrum markers. You need to subscribe and comment to qualify. I'll be back in about a week to announce the winner and until then, I'll see you soon and happy crafting.